What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time to do some live narrated battles for the Enter the Dragon type competition. Now I was able to practice with my team a little bit on Showdown. Um, wow, this is my second match and my opponent has an interesting mono rock team. Uh, hmm. Dialga's gonna kinda blow through this, I think. But anyways though, um, I was very pleased with how my team performed overall. Uh, with these Pokemon that I'm going against right here. Hit him on top is a fantastic lead. And we'll do that alongside um, Dialga. Just because I can Y guard to guard from Earthquakes and I can Intimidate. But uh, just having, uh, for example, Darkrai and Mega Altaria together just annoys because they have to focus on one thing or the other. And it just, it seems to really annoy some opponents. Um, my first opponent that I battled, which I didn't get on camera because I was just kind of testing things, uh, didn't even bring any Uber Pokemon, so that was an interesting matchup. But, uh, yeah. So I hope you guys are having a good tournament so far. I hope to get this up on the second day of it. Um, and we do see my opponent go ahead and leave with Aerodactyl. Uh, it's interesting that my opponent had more than 1,500 points. I don't know how many battles they have, but that means that they won it at some point with their team. And... He, maybe the Graveler has Eviolai, I just now thought about that. But right now, we're definitely going to use Fake Out on the Aerodactyl. And we're just going to Flash Cannon the Graveler. Okay, so we see Aerodactylite coming out here. And I can Flash Cannon uh, Aerodactyl on the next turn. I don't think it can KO me, uh, even with the Tough Claws boost on the Aerial Ace. Um, on him on top of course so we managed to stop that we're gonna bring Graveler down to the sturdy unless for some reason it has this hidden ability it should have sturdy there's a sturdy and what is Graveler going to do earthquake okay cool I that's not going to do very much at all especially after intimidate uh, Dialga is a defensive behemoth well I did more than I thought it would do on Dialga actually so now we're gonna go ahead and go for a wide guard uh, as we go for flash cannon on to Mega Aerodactyl. And that, that should definitely take out the Mega Aerodactyl. And even if Aerodactyl attacks hit him on top here, I don't think it'll KO it actually. So it is gonna go for Aerial Ace. It's his minus one. It does KO. Wow, I severely underestimated Mega Aerodactyl. That tough claws boost is very high. Fortunately, uh, the ability of Wygar stays in play even after the user is KO'd. I don't know if you all knew that or not. Same thing with Quick Guard, of course. And so he does try to go for Earthquake, but Wygar will protect me. Very nice. Um, now that I don't have to worry about uh, Aerodactyl anymore, this battle kind of gets sealed up just based on Mega Altaria's ability to hit pretty hard. I'll save Darkrai just in case something goes weird or he has a weird Scarf Pokemon or something. I don't know. Uh, but he's probably going to send out Tyrantrum now. Oh no, he goes for Aurorus. Alrighty then. So Altaria is going to come out here. Altaria doesn't like the ice type moves, but at the same token, he's not going to KO me with any one ice type move. So we get to Mega Evolve here. I'm actually going to Mega Evolve and Hyper Voice because I should outspeed the Graveler. And at the same time, we will Flash Cannon the Aurorus. So, and even if Aurorus goes for Ice Beam or I guess, uh, nature power to turn it into a try attack Altaria should be able to live it because it's not four times weak and Altar Mega Altaria is quite bulky so that's going to be it for Graveler wow that did not really that didn't really do anything to Aurorus actually three hit KO that's not impressive at all so and I I'm surprised that I outspeed it uh although I guess Dialga does have base 90 speed so I ended up going with a much more bulky spread on Dialga because uh, I didn't see the point in running any speed just because if he shares the same speed base as all those other Pokemon. And of course my Dialga is shiny, so that means it's the one from the event back in black and white too. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. We're just gonna go for the, well there's no reason to go for Draco Meteor actually. Hyper Voice, and yet another Flash Cannon. And that is primarily why I wanted to bring Dialga, just for all the Flash Cannons. Looks my opponent forfeited there. Thank you for the battle, my opponent there. Um, but just, prior, just having Stab, Flash Cannon for all that priority follow me when so much of it is fairy based is just perfect. Because then I can basically lead Dialga and another Pokemon. And, um, wow, well, I accidentally said no. I do want to battle, darn it. 
and by leading Dialga and e almost any of my other Pokemon, actually, it gives me a good matchup. So even if they do try to follow me, they just got obliterated by a Stab Steel type move. So what's my ranking? 1531, not bad. Um, be sure to leave the teams that you all use in the comments, especially since we're dealing with four person teams here. I would really like to see the types of teams that everyone chose. Here is something a little bit more standard that I expected, uh, Grudon and Kyogre. Uh, Dragonite with no item, interestingly, and of course, Superior. Now against a lead like this, we definitely want to lead with Hitmontop because I can use Wide Guard. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and lead Hitmontop Dialga again, or I could lead Hitmontop Darkrai just to put him to sleep because that's going to be an annoying setup there. We're going to go ahead and lead Hitmontop Dialga and keep the other two in the back. I like keeping my fast Pokemon in the back just in case. It's got a little bit of insurance that I like to do. Uh, and I could fake out unless he, uh, I don't think he's going to lead with both Groudon and Kyogre. There's not a lot of point in doing that, but I think he will either lead with Groudon and Dragonite, just so he can use, um, okay, he he's gonna go Dragonite and Kyogre, okay. Um, that makes things a little bit interesting. I'm not, I have Thunder on Dialga, so it's going to be perfect accuracy here. We are just going to go for the Wide Guard. I really like that he actually went ahead and let out with his Dragonite, because now, of course, the Intimidate's going to make that Dragonite kind of a non-issue for a little while. But in the meantime, we have to deal with Kyogre. I don't know if a Helping Hand boosted Thunder will one-hit KO the Kyogre, but um, two Thunders should be enough to finish it off, that being said. I do also have to worry about Ground-type moves from Dragonite, but for right now, we are definitely just going to... I could fake out the Kyogre, but I don't want the Dragonite to... Hmm. Yeah, I guess, I guess fake out the Kyogre on the off chance that Dragonite randomly has inner focus, and we're gonna go ahead and use, well, that's right, I took off Earth Power, I took off Thunder for Aura Sphere. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and, hmm, let's go ahead and Flash Cannon, no. We'll just Draco Meteor the Dragonite, that's what we'll do. I'm gonna Y guard and Draco Meteor. Is what I'm going to do actually. That no, I like the fake out option. We'll go ahead and fake out. And I'll go ahead and Draco Meteor the Dragonite. So we do get the fake out off on the Kyogre. That'll slightly weaken the water spout. Uh, Dragonite does get the Dragon Claw off. That's not going to do very much at all after Intimidate. And now we get to obliterate the Dragonite, so I'm very pleased with that outcome overall. Um that uh, Kyogre is pretty fast there, actually. Wow, that is an incredibly bulky Dragonite living the Draco Meteor. Of course, he probably had multi-scale, so that was just the answer to that right there. So here we're definitely gonna go for a wide guard, expecting the spread move from Kyogre. And we're just going to go for one more. We're actually gonna go for a flash cannon on the Dragonite. Kyogre's not really an issue, as long as I have wide guard support. Actually, now is a good time to, no, hmm. Yeah, now is a good time to just go ahead and take out this Dragonite because I don't want it setting up or anything like that. Uh, he does go for Extreme Speed, which is an interesting choice, and he goes for it on Dialga. I'm not sure what was really going on there. He goes for Origin Pulse. That does not work, of course. I really like Origin Pulse and uh, Precipice Blades in concept. Being able to hit your opponent's side of the field only with really powerful moves. That's just, the run as you guys know, with Sylveon running specs in VGC a lot the Pixelate Hyper Voice Altaria that I have. Just really, really powerful moves that don't hit your own team. Thumbs up on those for sure. So now I'm gonna guess he's gonna bring in uh, his Superior, which is another Pokemon that I'm not really worried about with the Pokemon that I have. Uh, I need an opportunity here to switch in something else because I would like to reset Dialga's special attack. He actually goes out in a Groudon. I would not have expected that at all. Uh, but since he's doing that, now is an opportunity I may have to go out into uh, my Altaria in case he tries to go for Press of His Blades. Of course, if he tries to go for the Fire-type move, Altaria will take that a little bit better than Dialga as well. Desolate Lin is going to override Primordial Sea and, of course, weaken Kyogre's attack, so we may see Kyogre switch out here too. 
There's no reason to not go for a Y guard here. Uh, I want to at least, wow, shiny Primal Grudon looks amazing, by the way. But um, I want to force him into going for that weaker move as I switch in my Altaria. So I'm definitely okay with that. I'm going to switch out Dialga. Also, that protects me from um, if he has Earth Power randomly on the Grudon. I don't have to worry about that hitting my Dialga either. So multiple options covered there. And here if he's forced, hopefully, okay, he decided to go straight for Precipice Blades and he tried Origin Pulse again. So um, Origin Pulse, of course, won't work in the desolate land. So yeah, I'm not too worried about that. We're just gonna keep on wide guarding because I have nothing better to do as we go ahead and Mega Evolve with Mega Altaria. And we're just gonna go for Hyper Voice here. Um, just kinda, I need to see what he's gonna do. It's not gonna do very much to either of these two Pokemon actually but I do need to bring them into range where I can finish them off with Dark Rise attacks or with uh, Dialga. Um, and something that guy pointed out, I have a pretty good chance of one hit KOing Grudon with um, my Dialga's Earth Power. And since I switched out Thunder off of Dialga, that's not really in the equation at all. But you know, and he tries to go for Water Spout, that just, it's not gonna work in the sunlight, of course. Interesting options shows in my opponent here. I, I'm going to assume that they're a little bit less skilled. Hopefully they're still having a good tournament run though. I don't know. I have no reason to not keep going for Y guard. It doesn't penalize me for it. Why would I not? Alrighty then, so since he's just gonna keep on doing that, let's try to end this a little bit quicker with a Draco Meteor onto the Grudon here. And uh, Kyogre's not really a threat with the, the Desolate Land up. And he just keeps on going for the double targeting move. So this has a chance to one hit KO Grudon. I don't expect it to just because it seems like he kind of has a random EV spread. So, all right, that actually did a pretty good amount of damage. And there's a water spot again, not working in the harsh sunlight. It doesn't work that way, man. All righty, so we're just going to once again, go for Y guard because why not? And now at this point I can just use hyper voice. Maybe it'll finish off the Grudon. Hopefully it'll finish off the Grudon. Uh, I I just, the idea of Hitmontop standing up to these mythical beasts and just completely blocking their attacks is moderately entertaining. Um, <laughs> it's, it kind of seems out of place, but since this doubles, Hitmontop is right at home, essentially. Um, we're just gonna go for a helping hand now because the water spout should not work in this weather. And he won't get the boost from rain anyway, so that'll be enough to take out the Grudon. And yeah. And then also, um, this is my first time using a Darkrai ever, actually, because uh, Darkrai has kind of always been uber material. And then even when he has been allowed, I just never had access to a, a good Darkrai. The one that I'm actually using is from the summer 2012 event. Back when I graduated and passed the bar, that was the summer I passed the bar. So that was a long time ago. Um, but, you know, at the same token, why not use newer Pokemon? And that's kind of why I'm not using any of the Pokemon you've seen me use in previous videos either. Um, we're not utilizing uh, my Aegislash with Y Guard. I'm not using, um, man, I'm not using Aromatisse. I'm not using Talonflame. Just all these Pokemon that I've kind of gravitated towards as far as uh, Pokemon that I enjoy using in doubles, I'm not using them at all. So there's the water spot again. I'm going to be very surprised if this does. Yeah, that didn't, okay, yeah. That's what I expected, but that's okay though. On the one turn, you should've used Origin Pulse. Now Superior's gonna come out here. I don't know what to expect from Superior. But at this point, him on top is kind of done his job. And now I can switch back out into Dialga with Altaria too. So uh, I guess just Y guard in case he tries to origin pulse again. And we're gonna go back out into Dialga. Hopefully he doesn't have a glare or something weird like that. And that's the, uh, I like the ability to switch with these Pokemon in case I encounter, you know, for example, Altaria is obviously weak to poison and steel. It's very easy to use Draco Meteor and then go on into Dialga, who is immune to poison and resists steel. Uh, so, 
a little bit of nice energy there. We do see Leaf Storm come out from Superior. Contrary, I'm assuming. There it is. But it's being quad resisted by Dialga. So not going to do very much damage there, unfortunately, for my opponent. Uh, but yeah, I like the synergy as far as, especially with him on top, if I need to abuse the Intimidate, I can go out and Darkrai to dodge a Psychic type attack and then come back if I need to. So a little bit of synergy there. Not, not too, too much synergy, but you know, enough to at least say hello about, I guess. So we're just going to flash cannon the superior at this point. And then after that, we will finish off the Kyogre with the Draco Meteor, and that should be the game. It's I, And it's odd, I, I'm playing this battle extremely safe, I'd say, uh, and I don't have to, but I, there have just been times when I just went, oh, well, yeah, this should be a cinch, and then I lose because I didn't play it extremely safe. So I'm not going to overextend myself at all if I don't have to, basically. Uh, fortunately, at this point, I can bring back in Altaria and Hyper Voice, and that's going to be the game. Because my special attack has been reset at this point. So, hooray, hooray, hooray. Times are tough for some people. I do wish I had enough PP ups and PP maxes to help out the amount of, um, I don't know, the amount of times I could use some moves here. But I don't end up needing it, hopefully, because doubles battles are pretty quick. This match has been pretty long, though. I think this, is, this has been a 10 minute long match. And we have just very unorthodox sets from my opponent. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen Superior use Giga Impact before, ever. Not even in the show. That sounds like something that Ash Ketchum might use. Just a real, um, you only live once type attack. But Altaria picks up two, much, two more KOs there, fortunately. And that's gonna be our third match, another victory. Thank you for my opponent for that battle. And we do not need to save that battle video. And I do want to keep battling this time, not like last time when I said no. I disagree. I would like to continue. Thank you very much. Um, and if you all encounter anything interesting in the Enter the Dragon type competition, please post it in the comments. Um, I'm, I wanted to make sure I got some of these live narrated so you would have my live reactions and my live thought process. Uh, but if you guys encounter anything especially interesting, please let me know. Because it's just always fun to hear what you all encounter. So here we have Sableye, Xerneas, Latios, and Dialga. Um, not for nothing, but Mega Altaria outside of the Dialga kind of squashes this team. So we're definitely going to leave Altaria in the back. I, I think that outside of the Latios, I can outspeed and put everything there to sleep. So we're going to go ahead and lead off with Hitmontop so that I can figure out the Latios if I need to. And Darkrai to put things to sleep if I need to. This will also allow me to hit the Xerneas with a Sludge Bomb um, and, everything, and nothing else there likes the Dark type stab that Darkrai carries. And I can also hit the Latios with an Ice Beam, but there's no point in that because I have Dark Pulse, so I don't know why I would do that. But yes, so it'll be, I, I imagine he's going to lead with his own Sableye and... Mm, maybe Dialga or something in an opportunity to fake me out, but I should be faster than his Sableye, um, generally. Granted, I can't fake out his Sableye, so he does lead out with his Sableye. And what are we to expect here is the question. He's going to fake me out. I'm going to fake out his Xerneas. He's probably going to fake out my Darkrai, and we're going to end having kind of a moot turn. The only real issue here is if he's carrying Scarf Xerneas for some weird reason, he can kind of obliterate my team, but I don't expect that, honestly. So I'm going to fake out his Xerneas, and on the off chance that he does not try to fake me out, I will be using Dark Void as well. So, Oh, it's Mega Sableye. That's not good. Alrighty, and I did not expect that, honestly. So I'm not actually sure how that interacts with Dark Void, because um, Dark Void would bounce back the the one that targeted, I'm not sure how that works. So let's see what happens here. He's gonna go for will o -Wisp on my Darkrai. I'm not sure why he would do that, but maybe he's expecting a Sash. So I don't know how this works. It's gonna bounce it back. Does it hit just one of my Pokemon or both or? It does hit both. Oh man, that's interesting. I would not have, I definitely did not expect that at all. So, okay, that's okay because we can still utilize him on top as far as Hitmontop's ability to intimidate. Unfortunately, I'm very asleep, 
So we need to, let's see. If I'm going to switch on to Dialga, that's not a bad, that's not a terrible switch. Um, he doesn't really have anything that's super affected by Intimidate, so I don't know. Although I would like to preserve the fake out. So we actually are gonna go ahead and switch up to Dialga. And we're gonna go ahead and Sludge Bomb Xerneas just because we know that uh, it protected last turn, so it's unlikely that it's gonna do it again. 50-50 shot at least. So we're gonna go ahead and switch out Hitmontop. Um, if he wants to burn Hitmontop, on, if I need low kick later, now it'll hit Dialga, which I'm not really worried about Dialga getting burned. Um, I don't expect this to KO Xerneas at all. I just needed to put it in range where I can KO it, basically. Uh, Dazzling Gleam may not KO because it's a spread move, but I am very, very frail, so it does end up KOing. I'm happy I went ahead and switched out because Hitmontop may still have some uh, utility, we'll say. Now, I definitely have to bring in Mega Altaria here because Sableye setting up is a very scary proposition. Uh, unfortunately, I would have liked to hold it in the back a little bit longer, but that's okay, especially because he has his own Dialga. So we're going to go ahead and flat. Well, he might protect Wazernius. I don't know why he would, but we're going to flash cannon Wazernius and we're going to mega evolve and hyper voice. I don't see anything here that can knock out Altaria before he gets the Hyper Voice off. So, uh, he might even protect with Sableye, just because that's kind of his, that's a really, really bulky win condition that he has going on right now. Mm. And I'll have to watch out for that in the future. I didn't think that Dark Void would hit both of my Pokemon when it bounced back. I just thought it would hit Darkrai, but that is definitely not the, and it's interesting that it also protected the partner. Um, it didn't even hit Xerneas at all. So here's the dazzling game again. This should not do very much at all. I'm not expecting it to at least. Wow, that had to be a crit. That was not a crit. That did an amazing amount of damage to Altaria. Good grief. And I did, I'm able to knock out the Xerneas doing a good amount to Sableye. Uh, I don't know what Sableye wants to go for here. It may not get a chance to depending on how much this flash cannon does. And it does not. I get a crit. Not sure if that mattered with the Calm Mind. I am carrying the Adamant Orb and it is Stab. And it is a Dialga. So, uh, he has Latios and, um, uh, wow, I just can, and Dialga of his own left. So, it'll be interesting to see how fast his Dialga is. Uh, I think I'm going to lose Mega Altaria here, so we are going to protect. Hopefully, he'll try to target it down. And that'll give, maybe that'll give my Dialga a chance to pick up a KO here. We're definitely going to be going for Draco Meteor on the Latios. Uh, so, Draco Meteor on Latios, and we're going to protect with my Altaria. We'll see if that helps there. I'm not sure what he wants to go for here. Uh, if he has a spread move, he might Earthquake. Psycho Shift, an interesting choice. Um, I'm not sure why he used Psycho Shift. He didn't have a status condition. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get my attack off. I'm running a lot of bulk, so he's faster. Um, I think this is going to be curtains because my Hitmontop has to sleep a turn. So I don't think I'm going to be able to use fake out or anything here. Intimidate's relatively useless. I don't have an opportunity to wake up. I'm not faster. Yeah, I don't see this coming out in my favor here. I mean, I can hyper voice hoping for a crit, but if I can knock out the Latios, then I can take out the Diago with a low kick, but I don't think I'm gonna get to that point, unfortunately. Yeah, I really misplayed going for that Dark Void there. It would have been a lot better if I had just attacked. Um, but you know, misplays all day. I just didn't know how the Dark Void would interact with the mechanics of Magic Bounce is the main thing. But now we know, this is a journey that we're taking together, and we now know what happens if you try to Dark Void a Pokemon that has Magic Bounce. It would probably put everything on the field asleep if I happen to have um, a triple battle going on. Another Psycho Shift from Xerneas, uh, I mean from Latios. I'm not sure what's going on there completely. Um, and unfortunately, that's going to be it for my Altaria. Biting the dust there. I really should have gone for Flash Cannon, although I, I couldn't have expected Psycho Shift from Lot. I'm not sure why he keeps going for that. 
I, I just don't know what's going on there, really. So if I wake up here, I can do a good amount of damage to Diago with a low kick just because Diago is so freaking heavy. I don't know if that matters though because I can't do anything to the Latios. So hopefully he's going to attack. I'm not sure why he keeps going for Psycho Ship. I really think I could have won this battle if I didn't put uh, myself to sleep because then I would have had the chance to go for a fake out as well. Ah, bah. Interesting that him on top can dance while it's asleep. Just, it feels the rhythm and it feels the rhyme. Uh, Roar of Time. Wow. I don't think I've ever even seen the animation for that in this game. That may not KO just because of how bulky my hit on top is, and it is not. If him on top wakes up right here, this could be an interesting game because now the Dialga has to recharge. So we're going to get off a low kick. And it does KO because Dialga is so incredibly heavy. Uh, mainly because of some time compression mechanics going on there, I'd imagine. And how much does a low kick do to Latios? I have no idea why he keeps on going for Psycho Chick. There's the Psychic. Why didn't you go for that so long ago? I don't understand why he kept on going for Psycho Shift. Oh well, I'll lose less points because it was a 1-0. That's uh, 0-1, rather. So, mm, that sucks. Also, if um, my Hitmontop were alive, I would have been able to go for a Helping Hand boosted Hyper Voice, which would have KO'd the um, the uh, Latios. So, yeah, that, I lost that battle as soon as I made that misplay in the beginning. But we know not to do that again. We know to just attack, mainly, is the main thing. So, yes, learning about game mechanics 101. Uh, we're at 15 26 rating. I lost my first match for 4 and. No, wait. We're 3 and 1. We are 3 and 1 right now, with 4 battles completed. How long has this been going on? I'm going to break this up into 30 minute segments. So hopefully I, this battle will be a lot faster than the last two battles. Um, oh, interesting team here with dual fairies, ice type, and a Dragonite. We see Cloyster, Togekiss, Dragonite, and a Zoomerol. Definitely, um, Altaria doesn't really mind too much here. I, I have to be careful of, um, of course, Cloyster's shell smashing. Uh, whenever I see a Togekiss, it makes me want to lead Diaga because I would expect Shell Smash alongside Follow Me. So we're going to go ahead and lead Diaga. And Shell Smash Follow Me. Hmm. I think I'm just going to go ahead and lead Diaga. And hit him on top. And we'll leave the other two in the back. Just because an extreme speed cannot KO my Darkrai. So. Uh, we'll see if I'm correct on that prediction. That lead matchup is sometimes just what determines the outcome of the game more often than not. Uh, if you're able to predict what your opponent will lead with, then that's sometimes the whole battle right there. If he does manage, if he does lead with the um, Azumarill, I'll like that even more because I'll be able to intimidate it. I don't think he'll lead with it though, just because the lead him on top is so obvious. Uh, he does lead with Azumarill, interestingly. So here we are probably going to see a fake out, or I'm rather, I'm probably, I think I'm just going to fake out the Togekiss, and then, no, well, Togekiss is probably going to use follow me anyway. So we're just going to flash kit in Togekiss, and we're going to fake out a zoom roll. Um, Togekiss could use Dazzling Gleam or Air Slash, neither of those will KO hit him on top. Uh, and since I'm using fake out, I don't have to worry about being flinched. So maybe he'll, we'll see a protect, no protect here. So I'm able to flinch that zoom rule. And we do see air slash, which is good. I'd rather see that after the protect. I will be able to live another one after my citrus berry, which is also nice. Oh crap, I'm running out of battery. And now I'm going to be able to blast that uh, Togekiss pretty hard. I will be surprised if it lives this. It might have a really hefty special defense investment. Oh, okay, there we go, perfect. So, um, now at this point, my opponent has to make a decision on what he wants to live and or die. He doesn't have anything to resist Flash Cannon, so we're just going to keep on pelting away with that, actually. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Azumarill with the Flash Cannon. And if he's going to go for Air Slash again, I could bring in Altaria, but on second thought, I don't want it to take any damage. I might need it against the Dragonite. So we're going to hit the Azumarill with the Flash Cannon. And... Um, I'm just going to helping hand that flange cannon actually to make it uh, more likely that it'll KO there. I don't really have anything I can do with 
my him on top right now. So I'll live this air slash in case I need to go for another. Oh man, it KO. Oh, that was a crit. I was about to say that did a lot more damage than the first one did. So unfortunately we get the crit there, but fortunately I am able to do a lot of damage here. Hopefully with my, wow, another bear just barely, barely, barely living these attacks here. That's okay though. Spread attacks from Altaria. Oh, he's, he can't use belly drum with that low HP. So that actually worked out really, really well in my favor right there. Um, I also know that his uh, Azumarill is slower than my Dialga, so I'm okay here to bring in Darkrai um, because I know that he can't do anything to outspeed me. He may hit me with Aqua Jet, but I'm not um, too worried about that, I guess. Right now, I just get to go for Flash Cannon onto the Azumarill, and then, of course, Sludge Bomb uh, on the Togekiss. So... Let's see if he goes for Aqua Jet, which he, he might, but okay. He does go for Aqua Jet. I know it's not banded, so I'm not really worried about the damage there. Which it, wait, what? It's a Scarf Togekiss. Alrighty then, that's annoying. He gets another critical hit. Fortunately, he doesn't um, splinch me. Uh, that really sucked to find out that that was a Scarf Togekiss that way. Cause now I'm gonna KO myself with Life Orb. That really sucked. Um, but I do get to take out his uh, Azumarill, which is good. I think that critical hit really may have mattered since he's Scarf, he's missing some serious offensive potential there. Now, as far as the Dragonite Cloyster matchup versus my Mega Altaria Dialga matchup, I think I had the, the, the upper hand just in terms of sheer bulk. Um, not being four times weak to ice really helps, but I do just get to drop uh, Draco Meteor here and Hyper Voice at the same time, so. Yeah, we're gonna do Draco Meteor with Diaga just in case he has the weakness policy. That way I'll go last. I don't wanna take the chance of setting that up and then having him hit me with a earthquake or something weird. And then we'll just hyper voice because Cloyster is not built for taking special attacks. So here we go. Here's a moment of truth. Here's a moment of poof as they know, no one says that. I don't know what I was about to say. No one says that. So we do see Ike's physical spear. We're gonna get hit by five of those. I'll be able to, ooh, this is gonna be close actually. Two. Three, four, uh-oh. I'm not able to live it at all. Alrighty then, well, I definitely should have protected before I evolved then. That is unfortunate. Um, we see Dragon Dance from Dragonite. Uh, hmm. He probably definitely has a weakness policy then. I don't think I'm gonna be able to KO with the Draco Meteor through the multi-scale, uh, just based on what happened last time, unless that was a bulkier Dragonite. So let's see here. Nope, I am not able to. That is unfortunate. He doesn't have a weakness policy though, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, I, <sighs> Scarf Togekiss critting me really sucked, honestly. So we're just gonna be able to get off a flash cannon here. Dragonite's the bigger threat, but I have to get hit by both either way, so. We might see a Shell Smash from the Cloister. Uh, of course, Shell Fire Punch, alrighty then. I'm not, oh, maybe he's trying to burn? Okay, we do see Shell Smash from Cloyster. That basically seals the game up. I should have targeted the Cloyster down. Although it probably has a Focus Sash, honestly, so it probably doesn't matter. Uh, White Herb? Nope, yeah, it has a Focus Sash. So that sucks. I I, I kind of lost that match in a combination to Hack slash not realizing that Togekiss might have been Scarfed. Because if it did that much damage to my Mega Altaria, there's basically no way that my Dialga will be able to live five hits from Icicle Spear. Unfortunate, but you know, that's the way that goes sometimes. Two, three, wow. Just to rub salt in the wound, get another crit, Cloyster. Why not? That sucks. I felt like I should have won that game. Ah, well. So now I think I've lost three and three or something like that. I am not playing well, particularly. Granted, I just got off of work. Those 12 hour shifts are not great to play Pokemon after. But that's no excuse, you know, you gotta do your best. Um, that match really sucked. I think I should've won that. All right then, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back with the rest of these battles. All right. 